Hi, in this video, we are going to talk about class 2 MHC antigen presenting pathway. Now, all the antigen presenting cells such as dendritic cell, macrophage and the B cell has one thing in common. They present their exogenous pep peptide on, the, on top of a class 2 MHC molecule. And we need to look at that what is the process by which class 2 MHC are synthesized what are the process by which exogenous antigens or peptides are loaded onto the class 2 MHC molecule and how they are presented on the cell surface. All of these things are going to be covered in this video. So stay tuned till the end of this video and watch it. So here is a dendritic cell which is an antigen presenting cell. So with its long process which are dendritic like processes it samples bacteria or any other pathogens. So whenever it encounters a bacteria it would engulf the bacteria and phagocytosed it, right? So in that phagocytosized bacteria, the phagosome would ultimately fuse with lysosomes present inside the dendritic cell. Now the lysosomal content would ultimately degrade the bacteria and release the antigens present in these bacteria. So these are the source of the exogenous antigen or the pathogen derived antigen. Meanwhile, we have to understand that inside the nucleus of the dendritic cell, MHC genes are expressed. So MHC genes are expressed in a cluster known as HLA cluster or human leukocyte antigen cluster. So for simplicity, imagine there is a MHC gene which is encoded, encoding the MHC RNA and that would be transported outside the nucleus and on the endoplasmic reticulum it would be translated. Now it turns out that there are two chains of MHC class 2 molecule alpha and beta and both are transcribed from different gene segments which lead to assembly of these uh, two component of MHC molecules. And this assembly process takes place in the endoplasmic reticulum. Now in the endoplasmic reticulum there are lot and lot of endogenous peptides which are destined to be loaded onto class 1 MHC molecules. Now how does these peptides are not loaded onto the class 2 MHC molecules? That's a great question which bothered scientists for a while. Later on it was discovered that there is a peptide which is blocking the MHC's peptide binding groove or antigen binding groove. This peptide is known as the invariant chain. Itself this invariant chain makes sure that none of the endogenous antigens are presented on top of class 2 MHC molecules. And this is very important right? And these in, this invariant chain also help the class 2 MHC molecule to be transported from ER to the Golgi body and follow the cell secretory pa cells pathway. Now from the Golgi body it would travel through the Golgi network and ultimately it would be moving towards the endosom endosomal vesicle. So it is very important that we understand the function of the invariant chain because if the invariant chain is not there then there could be detrimental effect because the self-peptides would be presented on class 2 MHC molecules and there are risk of autoimmune development and there would be a breach in the tolerance system. However, invariant chain serve its purpose and prevents any kind of endogenous antigen to be presented on class 2 MHC. Also, it helps in the transport which is pretty much established right now. Experiments have shown in a case where these um, invariant chain genes are mutated, in that case the class 2 MHC molecules are retained in the ER, they are never displayed on the cell surface. That means it also helps in the intracellular transport of the MHC class 2 molecules. Okay, so let's look at what happens when the MHC class 2 molecule reach the endosome. Remember in this endosome there was bacterial peptides, right, which were uh, there by which were generated there by the lysosomal degradation of the bacteria. But meanwhile, there is a huge shift in the pH and as a result, a portion of this invariant chain is actually degraded. Now, but there is a clip peptide which is still blocking the peptide binding groove. Another non-classical MHC molecule known as HLA-DM, HLA-DM helps to remove this clip peptide such that the MHC's groove 
peptide binding groove is now open and exogenous antigens can be loaded onto the class 2 MHC molecule. Now, HLA DM is not normally expressed on the cell surface, but it is mostly found in the phagosome or mostly found in the endosomal vesicles or endosomal compartments. And we understand the role of HLA DM. Now, since HLA DM has freed the peptide binding groove, now all the antigens which are derived from the bacteria, that means the exogenous antigens, can now be loaded onto the uh, peptide binding groove of class 2 MHC molecules. After that, class 2 MHC molecules would be transported to the cell surface and it would fuse to the cell membrane and would be finally displayed onto the dendritic cell membrane. Now, these class 2 bind antigen, bound antigens would be ultimately displayed to the CD4 positive helper T cells. In fact, this antigen presentation would give the CD4 positive helper cell a signal that it needs to recognize it and gets need to get activated. So that is how MHC bound peptide displays work and this is how MHC bound peptide helps the CD4 positive T cells to get activated. So I hope you get a broad picture of how MHC class 2 molecules are displaced, displayed on the cell surface. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you.